Innovation, impact, and transformation. Are we changing lives? That's the fundamental question that's been posed at Sankalp 2013. And I'm going to give you, well, we hope to get a perspective, which is a comprehensive one from Mark Stolson, who's CEO at Legatum. For the uninitiated, Mark, uh, describe Legatum. Legatum. So, so Legatum uh, is an investment organization. We have a 30-year track record. We invest all over the world. But we're a little bit unique because we manage just proprietary capital. So it's just our own capital. We're not out raising or managing third-party capital. What that means for us practically is that Legatum can take a more expansive view of its mission. And our mission statement is to generate capital and ideas that can help others prosper. We've been doing that for the last 30 years in a number of different ways. One is just through our investment business because we actually believe that the efficient allocation of capital can help businesses, which is fundamental for helping communities and societies grow. But we also do it through a foundation called the Legatum Foundation, which has supported over 1,600 projects in over 100 countries around the world. And today we're talking about social venture capital or invest, impact investing. Legatum expresses its view of impact investing through Legatum Ventures, uh, which is a part of Legatum um, that is really focused on allocating capital to great businesses, to great business leaders that we believe can produce a meaningful financial result, but also a social impact. But you know, there are a number of well, for lack of a better phrase, I'll call it gray areas. Mm. There are concerns, and we hear them voiced uh, by social enterprises who are seeking capital. What are impact investors really looking for? What are the principles based on which impact investments are made? Uh, you know, is there a, a role for the state to play? I'm going to address each of these questions one by one. Uh, uh, you know, what are the criteria, in a sense, that you use uh, when you're making investments? via Legatum Ventures. Mm. Well, I mean, I think we're at risk of overcomplicating this whole sphere of impact investing. So make it simple for us. Investing is investing. So the, the, the most efficient allocation of capital is when entrepreneurs have great ideas and the freedom within their business environment to express those ideas in a business. A well-run business creates not just goods and services for their customers, but creates opportunities within their communities, creates jobs, creates disposable income, and creates a, a virtuous cycle within, within a business and a, and a community ecosystem. The role of the investor is to allocate the capital efficiently to businesses that can generate a return. If that works well, all it does is produce more capital. It produces a surplus of capital in the business through profit, and it generates more capital inflow from other investors looking for returns. So, any investor, whether you call yourself a, an impact investor, or a social venture capitalist, or just a simple investor, is fundamentally looking for a return on investment. And, and keeping our eye on that ball here at Sankalp, or in general as we think about the, the evolution of impact investing, is absolutely fundamental. But you talk about return. It may be financial or social return, and it immediately raises uh, concerns and questions about measurement of return and a lot of the conversation today was around you know how um, how much of, of your time and energy and resources do you invest in measuring the impact uh, measuring the social return you said beyond a point it's meaningless have I paraphrased poorly beyond a point measurement is meaningless yes, being obsessed with measurement I think our, our question is really based on an observation which is that at some point if you spend all of your time and, and too much money on measuring your social impact, you're diverting essential capital away from the actual building of the business to the measurement of it. And at some point, it crosses the line into being an inefficient use of capital because it's not productive. Our question is, is really based on the observation that over the last 10 years, no one has come up with a, a, a sort of globally recognized way to measure social impact. So, our thinking is, let's allocate, let's find great entrepreneurs, let's find great businesses, let's allocate capital. We're not the entrepreneur, we're just the tool that's in the hands of a very talented person that's creating benefits for their society. And if that works well, then it'll take on a life of its own, creating social benefit. You've seen India mature, you know, from the point of view of social enterprises, impact investing. Um, assess, assess it today, 2013. What are the huge gaps that you see? Um, you know, what are some of the solutions 
that can be built through collaboration between government, corporations, impact investors, social enterprises. You know, what's the lay of the land, if you will? Hmm. Well, Legatum has been an investor in India since 2004. Uh, and, and we've remained an investor in the country since that time. So through market up cycles and down cycles, Legatum has been a consistent investor in India. Legatum fundamentally believes in the India growth story. Uh, there is, is tremendous opportunity, tremendous potential. What we have seen, though, in the last few years, and ask yourself, what has happened to foreign direct investment? It's not heading in the right direction. Certainly not. Not. And yet, there's still capital waiting on the sidelines. Capital is still being allocated around the world. And there is a competition for capital. Capital is seeking a return, and it will go to where it's welcomed. So even the discussion today about this initiative within India's government to force companies to take 2% of their earnings and put it through CSR, well, that might seem like a good idea, but it's important to ask, what are the unintended consequences from that action? Fundamentally, if you're standing on the moon and looking back at planet Earth, looking to allocate capital to where it's going to get a return, do you want to allocate it to India, where the government will force, where the government intervenes and forces 2% of the returns, or somewhere else where that's not present? I think those are important questions for us to ask. And, you know, I want to sort of take my question forward. Um, just in terms of your experience of investing in India, has it become easier, more transparent? Are there many more opportunities that look scalable, uh, have the ability for transformational change? I'm just trying to see it through your eyes, uh, impact investing in India. Well, impact investing or investing, just look at it as one whole. Okay. The, the data is totally conclusive that investment in India is going down and not up. Okay. Okay. So, and it, Legatum counts itself as one investor. But the, the important question is not what's happening, but why? Um, and, and how can we fix it? And how can we fix it? But you can't apply a solution until you have the correct diagnosis. So Legatum has been an investor in lots of different sectors in India, in financial services sector, in steel and other infrastructure development, but also in microfinance. And one event that happened in India has been pretty definitive. And what we're hearing globally is that what happened in Andhra Pradesh with the microfinance crisis has a chilling effect on investors' appetite to allocate capital to India. Because you can find a good entrepreneur, you can find a good business that you believe that you believe is generating a good return, but also a social impact. And by government fiat, that entire sector can be wiped out. That's the type of action that turns away capital, that reduces capital. That's but one experience. And yet, the facts are clear that investment is drying up and not flowing in. And on the other hand, there is government legislation that needs to be changed. For example, you, and I'd like you to share it again, uh, talked about the remittance industry, uh, which is just domestic. Remittances within India, not from overseas Indians back home to mm. India. And just the fact that everything's in place but for a restrictive legislation. Share that with everyone who's watching. Okay. So uh, Legatum has invested in a remittance company in India. There are several of them. Uh, why? Because there's a huge market. So within India, the remittance market is about $150 billion. That is far larger than the remittance market for Indians outside of India sending money home. So there's a, this is a huge country, a giant population. They're sending money back and forth from the city to the village, usually. So how do we facilitate that transfer? I mean, that's a, that has a very real palpable economic impact. If you get that right, do we need to measure the social impact? We know that it has a social impact. So this is important. You have great entrepreneurs. You have plenty of capital willing to fund those entrepreneurs. So what's holding back the development of the domestic remittance market? Well, up until recently, there was a government regulation, definitely with the best of intentions, that people on the receiving end of remittances have to have a bank account. And if you've traveled around India and you've been in villages, you realize that's an unrealistic expectation. That unintentionally has placed a burden on the very poor people that we mean to protect. Lifting that restriction will allow capital to flow, and it'll allow families to actually help each other. Instead of the government intervening and trying to manage, you're just re removing the restrictions and allowing people to help people. And fundamentally, that's what entrepreneurs do. 
they find a way to serve someone else with a good or a service that makes your life better and you're willing to pay for it. And this is just one of thousands of examples like that. So the question that I posed in the, in the, in the plenary session was, as people interested, as investors interested in impact or interested in the social dynamic of business, beyond just allocating capital to great businesses, and there are many in India, should we also be interested in the environment for business, in how easy it is to start a business, in the legal framework and the regulatory framework that people have to invest in? And it's a, it, the answer is extremely clear. We should be interested. We have to be interested because you have we confront to be interested. it every day. The question is, what do we do about it? And that's an open question for, for the very interesting people that we've met here today is, what are you going to do about improving the environment for entrepreneurship in India today? Some of it's going to involve many conversations with the government. Mark, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you.